Today is a very exciting day for all MidJourney users because a new tool has been released, a new feature that takes the application to a whole new level. Not only can you now upload and edit your own images in MidJourney, it's a bit like Photoshop, but you can also add new textures to images. Really amazing. How, when, what, who, and why at all. That's what's going through my head right now. There are some really exciting functions in this tool. I'll show them to you on the MidJourney website in a moment. Welcome back to the MidJourney website. But first, let me show you the news about the update. If you click on this bell icon at the bottom left, you'll get there. It reads, the external image editor has been released. As of today, however, this function is only accessible to a specific target group. If you scroll further down in the text, you'll see the exclusion criteria. You must have created at least 10,000 images. You must have an annual membership or a monthly membership for at least 12 months. As I meet these requirements, I belong to the group that is allowed to try out and use this external image editor. Very cool. I can already confirm, having seen several videos from other content creators, that the new tool is really fun and makes my work much easier. Let's jump straight into the edit section. You can see the new navigation point here on the left and discover together what's possible. If we look at the external editor in detail, we'll notice a new different layout. The edit and retexture functions on the left hand side. These are the two main functions that we can use. At the top, you can see the familiar input interface for the prompt. The control panel for the individual functions can still be found there. The submit button is to the right. On the far right, you'll find a large free area. Here, the history of the individual modifications is documented. The decisive module for uploading images to mid-journey is here in the middle. As I have already mentioned, this editor does not use images that are fed in directly from mid-journey. These are images that you grab from an external source. The blue button allows you to upload images from a website, a URL. The brown button, on the other hand, allows you to use images that you have created yourself from your desktop or an external hard drive. Let me show you an example. I have uploaded the image with this king. You can see that this activates the appropriate functions on the left-hand side. For example, move and resize. You can basically move the image and use the small white markers in the corners to reduce or enlarge it. You can reset the entire process at any time. This means that if I change something, the three buttons undo, redo, and reset will be activated. There is also this erase function. What is that? I can erase or delete parts of the image, so to speak. It's like in painting. This allows me to describe the area to be changed in mid-journey. At the same time, you can also adjust the brush size at any time so that you can also mark larger areas. Of course, this also works in reverse. Simply reduce the brush size in order to mark the areas between the spikes of the crown in detail. If you have accidentally marked too much, as I am demonstrating here, simply use the restore function in the top left hand corner. This allows you, similar to Photoshop, to unmark areas of the image again without having to start from the beginning. This ensures that only the parts that you really want are modified. At the bottom left, there is a selection for adjusting the aspect ratio. The layout is the same as in the normal editor. At the bottom left, unfortunately you can't see this now, are the two very important buttons, download image and upscale to gallery. If you do not click on Upscale to Gallery after creating an image, your image will not appear in the Create section of the website. Please remember this. Let's now evaluate the Edit function in more detail. I uploaded the picture of the woman and marked the dress with the Erase function, and then refined the selection with Restore. I then triggered a suitable prompt. This reads, Red dress with white dots. You can see that the woman's dress is relatively monochrome. She is wearing a white costume, so to speak. After Midjourney has modified the image, these new images of a red dress with white dots are created. This is very impressive to start with. 
you can virtually change the clothes of people and images. In the next example, I don't want to change the inner parts, but the outer parts, specifically the ground in front of the house. I select the area to the left, right, and below, and write the prompt, lush green meadow. Midjourney generates results that look like this. This means that the basic structure remains the same, but the content changes. If I now click on the original image at the top, I can go back through the individual steps via undo until I see the unedited original image. In the next example, I use another theme of the editor. I have uploaded this image of a rather grim looking woman. The image is currently 16 to nine. I would now like to create a different image format. A different aspect ratio. First attempt, I simply press submit at the top here without prompting. Then you'll see that there will be no result without a descriptive prompt. Midjourney is very strict and states you have to write something if you want an image modification. I have already explained this. Just like in the normal editor, this works very well and Midjourney adds suitable image content. But the really fascinating thing there is a new function here that will help you if you have no idea what to write as a prompt. As requested by Midjourney, you could simply write something to change the image format, but you don't have to do that because the new function called suggest prompt tells Midjourney to analyze the image and write a suitable prompt for me. Then all you have to do is click on submit. This function is really incredibly ingenious because it makes your work so much easier. You can also remove or change details there. I have already seen in other prompt suggestions that Midjourney even adds the camera type. This function is really great. I can only recommend using it. Now let's discover the second highlight, the so-called retexture. In simple terms, Midjourney recognizes the composition of the image, its structure, if you will. In this case, it's the anthropomorphic banana, which you may recognize from my previous tutorial. It walks around in this field in a kind of amazement. I've now told Midjourney, I want it to snow and the banana should not be standing in the sun, but in the snow. Create a winter atmosphere for me. This is more or less the result. The banana is laughing in the snow. Compared to the more summer-like depiction, I then chose a somewhat cheeky setting. The prompt is banana after an explosion. Midjourney creates the following results. If you then compare the images directly with each other, you can see that the structure of the image is retained, but the space is completely redefined. Midjourney interprets the field and shows it to us after an explosion. You can take the process of retexture to a whole different level. Think for a moment of an artist who only draws black and white images. I have now told Midjourney via retexture to draw me a medieval house. And this is the result. Midjourney simply takes the existing image and adds this. The same works for this statue of a dragon. I uploaded my picture and wrote marble statue in ancient Rome as the prompt. This is the result. You can't help but be amazed. This is absolutely great. The consistency of the image to the original is retained. In the background, you can see a Roman building. The viewer is looking through two columns at the statue of the dragon. This statue probably stands on a large market square. Quite unique. When you think about the possibilities this opens up, it makes your head spin. In this next example, the amazement continues. I uploaded this drawing of a ship of mine into the editor and then applied a style reference. In this specific case, the number 10,248. I've already made a few tutorials on the subject of style references you are welcome to take a look. I wrote pirate ship as the prompt. This result is amazing. If you look at it in direct comparison, it's exactly the same proportions, but you can take it even further to the extreme. I went into Photoshop and created a drawing of a child. The message is a car on the left, then a house and two trees. Then I write exactly the same prompt and add a style reference of my choice. Retexture then produces this result. The three essential elements, car, house, and tree, are clearly recognizable. This is simply gigantically ingenious. If we now take a step back and check how we can organize images created this way, you'll see the View All button at the top right. Click on it, 
and you'll land on the Edit Your Images page, which shows all your images. If you want to create a new project, i.e. edit a new image, simply click on the Edit New Image checkbox in the top left-hand corner. If you now want to remove all these images, i.e. you no longer like them, simply select them by holding down the mouse button. Then move the cursor down, click on the More button, and select the Hide option, and they are gone. You can also remove the uploaded images. To do this, simply click on the small icon. It looks like a trash can. Finally, the picture of this woman again. If you want to continue using a picture, you have to select it via Upscale to Gallery. Only if you execute this process, it will be transferred to your normal Create section. Otherwise, not. The external image editor is a separate tool. This creates an image that is enlarged immediately in the Create area. You can see that Midjourney starts processing and transfers the image at the end of the job. As I said, this is the only way to guarantee that it will be saved in your normal storage. You can then process it there. You could also download the image from the external image editor directly to your hard disk. The editor is an absolutely brilliant tool, so be sure to use it if you have access. You can achieve incredibly cool results from a simple sketch. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and recommend it to others. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel. AI. Now you know.